like to say shouts out to all the brothers and sisters out there in social media land. <clears throat> this is indeed a great day to be alive, another great day to be alive. This is a day the Most High Heavenly Father made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. And then we're going to make a, a short video based on the previous videos dealing with the, uh, the days what many have come to call high holy days or feast days or we want to make another video um just pertaining to that because what we really want to do is we want to bring an understanding to brothers and sisters so that we don't waste our lives putting our energy in places that are futile and uh, i will say this again I myself, like anybody else, have done many things out of my zeal and out of a pure conscience and a good motive uh, that were not right. And so we're not saying nobody's wrong about what they're doing because when we start doing things, we genuinely doing things and we have a mindset that tells us we're doing the right thing. But when we see what the Word of God have to say, then we have to be prepared to make a change and make a shift so that uh, the Messiah can be glorified. So um, we want to, uh, I want to do a video and I want to show brothers and sisters just from different angles why certain things have become a waste of time. If, and if we're not careful, we can find ourselves going against the grain. Now, dealing with these feast days, these high holy days, these days of atonement, all of them, we have already laid the scriptures out there. And you know what? It I understand. It don't matter how good your intentions are when we're trying to do something. If we're not getting it done the way that the Most High decreed for us to get it done, then it's not going to be accepted by the one that we're seeking to do these things for. So, so I want to go over two passages just to uh, bring an even greater understanding. Now, to cap this off, once again, to cap this off with our brothers, because we already know. Many of our brothers, they get angry when they hear certain things, but it's not because what they're hearing is incorrect. It's because they have become, become used to a certain method or a certain way of doing things, and they do not want to release themselves from that. So it becomes a great challenge for, uh, for them in that aspect. Rather than accept that what you hear is the word of truth, we'll make all kinds of excuses as to why uh, we do what we do. And then we become what the scriptures say. Those that say or claim God and then become mutilators of his word. We become mutilators of his word when we can see it, when we can hear it, and then we don't accept it. We just tear that page out the Bible. And we're going to show you the reasons why uh, that we don't want to be found doing that. So we're going to take off running into this video right here. We're going to start this up in the book of Joshua. Now, as we said, Moses had already prophesied about a prophet that was going to come and then be able to lead the people right unto the Most High, right into the presence of his Most High, just like Moses led the people into the presence of the Most High when he took them to the base of the mountain. Now, in the book of Joshua, it starts off by letting us know. Now, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, you, Joshua, rise up and take these people across this river Jordan into the land that I promised to their forefathers. It became Joshua's responsibility to now take them across. Joshua is a foreshadowing of the prophesied one that was going to come in the future. For Joshua and Yeshua, that's the same name. It means the same thing. The Lord saves. And so we're going to commence to read in, in Joshua, the seventh chapter. We're going to commence to read in Joshua, the seventh chapter. This is going to be a very important point. 
that we're going to make. And this point is it, this point is not just being made for the brothers and sisters. This point is being made for our camp leaders, for our community leaders, for all the brothers and sisters that's out there leading different organizations that uh, uh, that um, say that they are doing this and, and, and for the family of Israel. This is going to be for all of us so we can get an understanding. That is read. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, the, the, of the tribe of Judah, he took an accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent forth men unto Jericho and to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And all the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all of the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor hither. For there are but a few people. So there went up of the people about 3,000 men. And the 3,000 men of Israel fled before the face of small Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 36 men. For they chased them from before the gates even unto Shebron and smote them in the going down, whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening tide, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou I have all brought us this people over the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us. Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all of the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around us and cut off our name from the earth and what will thou do unto thy great name and the lord said unto joshua get thee up wherefore liest thou down upon thy face israel have sinned and they also have transgressed my covenant which i commanded them for they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and disassembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but be turned back before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more except you to destroy the accursed thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people. And sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, There is a cursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou cannot stand before thy enemies until you take away the cursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according unto your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord take it shall come according to the families thereof and the family which the Lord take shall come by households and the households which the Lord shall take shall come man by man and it shall it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire he and all that he had because he had transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he had wrought folly in Israel, so Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of he took the family of Zarhites and brought 
the family of the Zarites, man by man. And Zabdi, Zabdi was taken, and he brought his house, man by man. Now, here's the point that I want to make. You understand is that the children of Israel were possessing the land that God had promised them. But they had to drive their enemies off of the land, so they had to go to war. Now, up until this particular point, they had been victorious over all of their enemies because they were operating in the instructions of the Most High. Now, when they get to Ai, a small town that they said, well, you ain't got to send the whole army up, just send a few of us up. When they get to this small town of Ai, they thought they was just going to run in there and take over that Ai. And, and, you, and you know what? It says that the men of Ai, they ran Israel out of there. They smited Israel. They made Israel turn their back and flee. And when the Israelites got back to the camps, they, the people's heart melted with fear. Because they said this little bitty, little bitty slither of land the ran Israel off. We've been knocking off all of these people up until then. Now we're going to lose the battle to this little bitty. What is that going to do? What is that going to do to us? Why would you bring us across the Jordan to destroy us? So Joshua now wants to start telling the Most High about all that he thinks. Sort of like we do when something happens to us. He said, well, you know what? This little bitty country that took us, they done ran our men back. The people are afraid. Why would you bring us over here to destroy us? What are the Amorites? What are the Hittites? What are the uh, uh, Hivites? What are all these people going to think about Israel when they find out little bitty AI done whipped our men and ran us back? And said, then they're going to seek out to surround us, gather themselves together and surround us to destroy us. He said, and when they destroy us, what is that going to do to your good? name till you put it on God but the most high is wise brothers and sisters we better understand thinking it ain't no match for the most high period because the most high make us aware of things that we ain't even thought about things that we ain't even looked at so this is Joshua talking to the most high now the most high gets semi angry and say what What's wrong with you laying on your face? Up, get your butt up. Get your butt up. It's a reason why you lost to AI. Israel have sinned. They have taken of the accursed thing and they have sinned against me and transgressed. Therefore, you can no longer stand in the face of your enemy. It's a reason why Israel can't stand in the face of their enemies. And there's some things that we don't understand. You see, one pocket over here thinks that they got it right. One pocket over here thinks that they got it right. One pocket over here thinks that they got it right. But what they don't understand is that one man by the name of Achan stole the Babylonian's garments and a sliver of gold and silver and hid it amongst his stuff in the camp. And God said, all of Israel have fallen into sin. So he told Joshua, on tomorrow you get up and on tomorrow you bring each one of those camps together by day camp. You bring them as a whole tribe of people and then you split them up and you go through that tribe and you break them tribes up into houses and then you go in each one of those houses and you go man by man until you find the one that have stolen the accursed thing and have it amongst Israel. This is why I say this stuff that we're doing is futile. Because until all of Israel get on the same page, you ain't keeping no feast day. You ain't keeping no feast to weeks, no feast to boots, no day of atonement. You ain't keeping none of that until all of Israel get on the same page. One of the reasons why is because the accursed thing is being put amongst our stuff. Now look at us as a people. 
as one people, one ethnicity of people, Negroes, Negroes that were sold from the banks of West Africa that fleed from Jerusalem into African lands and then were sold from the banks of West Africa into South, Central, and North America. And now we scattered everywhere. We look like each other. We talk like each other. We got the same blood running through our veins, but all of us are believing something different. You got the Christian over here. You got the Muslim over here. You got the Hebrew Israelite over here. And then you got the rest of our people sprinkled up into over 4,900 other false religions in this world. And we wonder why every other nation on the planet can be blessed. Why all the white people can own all of the stores and own the government and control the money. Why all the Arabs can control the gas stations. Why all the East Indians can control the grocery stores. Why all the Asians and Chinese people control the restaurants and the beauty supply places. And we wonder why the Negro don't control anything. It's because there is a curse thing in the camp. And the problem is, is that there are not enough brothers that will labor in this aspect of the world so that they can go through each one of them, tribe by tribe, house by house, man by man. We gonna go tribe by tribe. Every brother that claims that he is Islam, every brother that claims that he is a Muslim, we going tribe by tribe. Bring that tribe before the Most High. Bring it before the Word. We going to the camp, man by man, and dissect his life, dissect his responsibility, dissect whether he's taking care of his kids, dissect whether he's a cheater, whether he's a whoremonger, whether he's a for a fornicator. We dissecting every. We gonna dissect the camp of the one that calls himself the Christian man. Because because we're all one people and we're going to dissect everything until we find or have the ability to show our brothers the accursed thing that's clogging up the flow of Israel. Now, so he had a mandate to bring them all because they got to find this accursed thing. And the only way they're going to find it, they got to go through 12 tribes. They got to go through 11 tribes. They got to bring the whole tribe through, and then they got to go each one of those families, man by man. And they got all the way down to the place to where they found Achan, the one who was responsible. And God said, when you find a cursed thing, I want you to burn him and everything that he have with fire. Burn him with fire. Burn his wife with fire. Burn his children with fire. Burn his cattle, his clothes, his house. Burn everything that is connected to him with fire. And that's what we're going to have to do. So the point that I want brothers and sisters to understand out of this particular thing here, when we start talking about 364 days is what God set up to govern these feasts and these events that's contained in the scripture that our ancient ancestors went by. When God set up 364 day a year calendar, you must understand that the 365 day a year calendar is the accursed thing that is being hidden among Israel's stuff. And Israel will never be able to stand before his enemies as long as he's going by the accursed thing. And it only took one man to transgress. To cause the whole nation to fall into sin. It only took one man. You see? So even by happenstance, if one of our camps get it right, the 364 day a year, and they get in the right feast days, and they get in the right times, and they get in the right seasons, even if one of them get it right, and the rest of them don't get it right, we all still are cursed. It took one man to bring a curse on all of Israel. He said all of Israel is up under a curse because of what Achan did. And we have to become the Joshua's. We have to become the Joshua's in this world that are willing to do what God said. Just think if Joshua was afraid to go and gather those tribes up by their whole tribe 
I don't care what you say. Bring your whole tribe together. Oh, no, brother. I know this is your house. I know this is your tent. But we coming in here today. We coming in here today because we looking for something. And if you ain't guilty, you'll be all right. But if you guilty, you're going to be in trouble. So they kicking through the doors of every man's house. Looking at his wife's stuff. It's almost like we got a search warrant for every tribe and for every house of that tribe because we looking for something. You see? And we do all these things and we have all these gatherings and we do this, but we don't put no spotlight on people who have a cursed thing in their life. You got a brother or a sister right now that have a cursed thing in their life, but they connected to the gathering. They out there. They want to be on the platform performing. They want to be doing this. They want to be reading the scripture for the person that's breaking down. But see, you ain't put a spotlight. Because when you don't get the results that the Most High mean for us to get, then we have to be wise enough to understand that something's wrong. If I ain't winning this battle, if I'm not destroying my enemies, if I'm not being successful in this world, if I am not being able to pay my bills right, if I got trouble in my home, if my children are disobedient, if my fellowship with my family is out of order, all of these things are coming to tell me that there's a cursed thing in the camp. And when you know it's there, you got to go and find it. Because I know if my life ain't being what it's supposed to be, I want to know why. And God ain't going to withhold the reason why. He said you can make all the excuses that you want. You brothers can make all the excuses that you want. But at the end of the day, when that book says that we shall, uh, uh, we shall make an abominable day, God's holy day, that's something serious. When we should change God's uh, feast day for a, a, a clean day for an unclean day, that's something serious. When God tells us the things that we would do when we are out of order and wrong, that's something serious. That ain't nothing to play with. And you see it on a video on YouTube all over, all over the country right now. Brothers are showing and displaying their gatherings, the, the Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tyrant. Everybody dressed in white, everybody doing all of this stuff, all this extracurricular stuff. But ain't never one of them done what God said. They have made the Day of Testimony on the Day of the Gentiles. And they are living according to the Gentiles' era. And even if one of them gets it right, until all of us have got it right and got the right understanding, God said all of Israel have sinned. All of Israel have sinned. You see? Because we've broken up and divided so bad. You got the leaders of organizations fighting against the leaders of organizations in the name of God. You got brothers out here on the street in the name of God, cursing out, yelling, and screaming at the people that God meant for them to be uh, mentors to. You got all of this stuff going on. You got brothers that ain't learned how to have responsibility over their own life, ain't learned how to manage their own life, and want to be trying to manage two or three of the lives of three or four, five women. Ain't going to do no laborious work. Sit back and let these women go and do whatever they're going to. You see, we got all of this in Israel. Nobody wants to address these things. And everybody, every time you turn around, it's going to be out of their mouth. Like out of, uh, uh, out of, one, of these, uh, one of these cats' mouths out there. It's on some nonsense. Listen, man. Somebody going to have to do it. All of Israel have sinned. When Achan stole the Babylonian's garment, Israel was resting comfortably, destroying their enemies. But when they lost the battle against that little bitty country, they knew something was wrong. They knew something was wrong. They didn't know with pinpoint accuracy where the wrong had came from. That's why Joshua uh, fell on his face like that. But when God showed him, Israel had transgressed. And he told him exactly what the transgression was. And see, he's still doing the same thing. All of Israel have sinned. Now we come into the understanding that we are Israel, that we are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We come to that knowledge. But our life circumstances ain't changing. Something got to be wrong with this picture. Something got to be wrong with this picture. 
Because when I come to understand that I'm Israel, it start lining up with prophecy. Notice for a certain Abraham that your descendants shall be sojourners in a land that is not theirs. They shall serve them and be afflicted for 400 years. And after that, I shall judge the nation that did it. And my people shall come out with great substance. When I start understanding these things, I'm supposed to be waging war. I'm supposed to be taking everything back in my life. Everything that rightfully belongs to me. But I can't just be claiming that I'm Israel and I still can't pay my rent. I still can't get a, a house on my name. I still ain't got no good credit in this world. I'm still getting the eviction notice. I'm still getting child support letters that I'm fighting against. When child support should last a man until either the day he die or the day his children die. Listen. We're not dealing with no ancient ancestors. We'll paint the picture of our ancient ancestors to show you the transgressions of Israel right now. Because you still can't go and buy a car unless you borrow the money from somebody else. When the prophecy to Joshua was that you should be the head and not the tail. And you should be the lender and not the borrower. Where, where we was the borrower and the tail while we was afflicted. But at some point when that affliction is supposed to have a turning point. If we ain't doing those things, we should be asking ourselves, something is wrong. Most high, you got to show me something is wrong. Something is wrong somewhere. Shout out to your elder Amaniel, and elder Amaniel can back this up. We got brothers that's over there in the land that have never lost contact with their 364 day a year calendar. And when they have a feast day, they spot right on time. They know when the feast of trumpets, the feast of booths, the feast of wheats, the feast of unleavened bread. They know when the Passover is. They know when it is. But us that have been scattered, us the Israel that have forgotten, why is it that the brothers over there, even though they haven't lost contact with it, can't receive the blessings of the Most High? It's because of this same thing Israel have seen. Look at Achan over there in the Americas, tripping. Living, stolen the Babylonian garment of 365 days a year and trying to look at it. He have even put it amongst his stuff and he is celebrating and he is having a good time. When the word of God comes, he rebels against it just so he can have his way. Do you not know that we sometimes can clog up the flow of our Israelite brothers who have never left the land, who are still attached to it, who are still praising God and they over there wonder why these children Chinamen over here. Why these Europeans, why these French people still here? Why are we still paying these people? We supposed to be back. I tell you why. Because Israel have sinned. Not only have they forgotten the statues that are still sealed in stone, written on heavenly tablets where my holy days was concerned. Not only have they forgotten that, but they heaped up to themselves the customary ways of the Gentiles. And they're acting and living like Gentiles. So, we want brothers and sisters to see that God don't see Israel. Like we think. One person can be out of place. And God will say, all of Israel have sinned. You know why? Because it's all of Israel's responsibility to become a governing force and police each other to make sure that we ain't falling into sin in these areas. It is our responsibility to deal with our brothers when their lives ain't in the order that it's supposed to be because if their life is out of order and they're attached to you, it will bring a curse on the whole family. It's just like having an open infection. The virus, the infection will spread. If you don't get on that infection, and deal with it right there and start medicating it and healing it it'll spread throughout the whole body so all of Israel have sinned and this is a message that brothers don't want to digest and for, for a couple of reasons one reason is that like I said, sometimes we can get engrossed in having such a good time and a great time and we doing it in the right name for the right reason, but we wrong on how we supposed to do it. And then you got another group of brothers 
These are the ones that the Messiah warned you about. These are the ones that the Messiah warned you about when he told you, take heed, don't let no man deceive you. For many going to say that this is how God wanted it done and they're going to deceive many people. And you got some of these brothers back here don't want to give these things up because they didn't got accustomed to getting two or three hundred thousand dollars out of people's pockets. They didn't got accustomed to being able to get a person's paycheck. Uh, bring me a paycheck and I'll distribute you your own money. They have got accustomed to making money uh, so that they can live a good life in this world off of people. They don't want to give it up. But we understand that many going to be deceived. And we don't even try to stop deceive, uh, them from being deceived. Because the ones that's going to be deceived, they're not going to listen to nothing. We got brothers right now. We got brothers right now. While we do these videos, I can be reading straight from the word. And then you got a brother telling me what the camp leader said. Just like when people, we do dealing with the Bible, you got somebody telling me about, about what they pastor said. You see, them people are already appointed for the day of deception. We don't even worry about them because the Most High already said they have made their choice. They choose to follow men. But if you're going to choose to follow God, you got to pull your britches up and you got to stand up straight and you got to hold your head up and you got to understand this is my life. This is the life that God had given me. I'm not going to be found walking in the footsteps of my dead ancestors while I'm living. I'm going to be found making the leading the pathway. I'm going to be found making my own footprints. This is my life. This is my mindset. This is my wisdom, my understanding. You can do what you want. You can think what you want, but you don't think for me and you don't change the way that I think. I go to the God that I serve and I get on my face. God will give me a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of understanding that far surpasses anything that any man could ever do. You can sit back and become a follower of men. While they doing all of this stuff, God got his messengers out there going forth to show you that they are wrong. To show the people that's following them that they wrong. He who will have an ear will hear what the spirit is saying to his holy convocation. So, the end of the story is, they went through all those tribes, house by house, man by man. And they eventually found Achan. And let's show you what happened. Let's show you what happened. Let's see. And Joshua, let's say, let's say, and he brought the family of Judah. And he took the family of Zahites. And he brought the family. Wait a minute. I think I read that already. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I read that. Okay, and it says, and he brought his household, Zabdi was taken, and he brought Zabdi's household, man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the God of Israel. And make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold, and 50 shekels of weight. Then I coveted them, and I took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver was under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and they brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel, and they laid them out before the Lord and Joshua and all of Israel, Joshua and all of Israel, Joshua and all of Israel took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold 
and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? And that's the question that's going to be put to many of these brothers in the days to come, we're going to start calling you out by name, calling you out by your camp, calling you out by your leadership. Why have thou troubled us by getting Israel to do things that they should not be doing when they should be serving the Messiah, when they should be hearing the voice of the Messiah? Why have you troubled us? That's what's going to happen. Because the people are going to have to have a clear line of distinction that runs through the way that the ancient ancestors done it in sin versus the way the Messiah is doing it that is to save us from the sin that they were committing. And in days to come, all of the people are going to know. Those people that have an ear to hear, they're going to be able to go back and look at what you as a leader are talking about. If what you as a leader is saying is lining up with what the scripture is saying, he asked him, why have you troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day and all of Israel. All of the brothers and sisters that have ears to hear God's word rise up and, and with a spirit of understanding and wisdom. All of those people and all of Israel stoned him with stones and burned him with fire. After they had stoned them with stones, they burned them with fire after they stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a giant heap of stones until this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. You see, you think about our people. Our people, because of a loss of everything, a loss of our history, a loss of our understanding, a loss of our identity, we have this innate desire on the inside to become a part of something. I've been there. It's, it feels so good when you're a part of something, when you can identify with something. We want to be a part of the church. We want to be a part of the camp. We want to be a part of the community organization. Look at our brothers that ain't religious. They want to be a part of the motorcycle club. They got to be a part of the Cadillac club, the Mercedes-Benz club, the BMW club, the Jeep club, and any other club. They want to be a part of all of these different clubs, the two-stepping club, the line dancing club. If we want to be a part of something because it gives us something to do that feels good when we fellowship it with each other. But you better be careful what you're going to be a part of. It got to be some men and women that is willing to say, I don't need to be a part of nothing. I don't want it. You can do what you're going to do, but I got to walk by myself. I can't be hearing so many voices to where I can't hear the spirit speaking to me about what God means for me to be doing. We want to be a part of something. And I understand that. But one day, the Most High going to deal with the things that you want to be a part of. And he's going to come and he's going to, by his word, declare, why have you troubled my people? Because the time that they spend in being a part of something is the time that they're supposed to be spending with me. And I am a jealous God. And I will not share my glory with anyone. And you can talk about, oh, I thank God for my pastor such and such. Oh, my pastor such and such. God said, you can't thank me for nothing. If you give me thanks, it better be me. Thank me for everything. You don't thank me for your pastor. You don't thank me for your elder. You don't thank me for your organization. Because I can shoot one word out there and the whole thing will be broke. I can speak one word and the person you thanking me for will, will not even have a mind. Have Alzheimer's. Going to die. I can send my death angel and I can destroy anything that you thanking me for. I don't share my glory with nobody. If you're going to give me thanks for anything that's good in your life, you give me thanks for everything. You don't single nothing out. Give me thanks for everything. I thank the most high 
for the day that he made. And everything, when I thank him for the day that he made, I thank him for every last thing that happens in the day. When I thank him for the day, when I say this indeed is a great day to be alive, I don't have to thank him for my wife. And she wake up in that day, I done thank him for everything that done transpired. I don't have to thank him for the job. I don't have to thank him for the boss. All I have to do is thank him for the day because everything that happens within the framework of that day is what I'm giving him thanks for. But he don't share his glory with nobody. All of Israel have sinned, brothers. All of Israel have sinned. All of Israel have sinned. And know this for certain that after your death, your children will forget and they will not make the year 364 days a year and all of the seasons, all the new moons, all the feasts and all the Sabbaths shall fall out and they shall begin to confuse my holy days with heathenistic days and they shall make a heathenistic day a day of their testimony and they shall confuse the clean with the unclean and I got to stand on the sideline looking at the people that I love that I want to bless going wrong don't even have the ears to hear and keep sinking farther and farther and farther into a greater home of sin why can't we get it all of Israel have sinned if you're a part of these camps and you're a part of these community organizations, you're a part of all these things, you need to come out of there. You don't need no man to follow. I'm writing these things concerning him that will seduce you. But you have an unction. You have the spirit that came from the Father that I promised to give to you upon my death. He said and you don't need no man out front teaching you or leading you. But the spirit I sent into the world, he shall be the one that leads you and guide you. He was the spirit of truth. There is no lying in him. He'll lead you in the ways of truth and show you things that's coming. If you're a part of these things and you can't find a way to break away from them, then you doomed. You go on to have a good time. You go on to keep the rap fest up. You go on to keep on eating the lamb. You go on to keep on eating the flesh and blood. You go on to keep on doing everything that you do and you'll enjoy in this life, but you'll burn like Haken. You find a cursed thing and then you bring them down there and you throw them stones until they don't move no more. Then you set them on fire and you burn them. You can have a good life in this world right here, but you'll burn later. Now, I don't even have to apologize because when I feel the spirit the Spirit is speaking to me about my own life, about my own failures, about my own challenges, about the things that the Most High had brought me through. It makes me joyful. It makes my heart swell up. It makes water come in my eyes. It makes me cry out of gratitude. You know what? I don't apologize for that. I'm not going to apologize for that. That that come from the heart will reach the heart. That was one. That I want you to see. That you can't do nothing on your own. When you got all these organizations saying that they love the Lord. You got Islam. Talking about they God's people. You got Christianity talking about they God's people. You got Israel talking about they the chosen people. Well, you got all of these siblings. And do you not understand that when the Messiah taught the uh, disciples how to pray. He said you pray our father. Who art in heaven. Why do we say our father? Because when you say our. It connects all of us. And if all of us are connected. Then we are brothers and sisters. And how are we going to be connected to the most high. And we ain't got no fellowship. Ain't got no common ground. Ain't got no one mind to see things. That's where we're going next. Because there are some things that's written in the scripture. That the most high going to declare. We going to know when we got it right. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. We shall all call on him with one consent. Let's go to Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. 
I hope y'all getting something out of this. Don't let my excitement take nothing away from the words that's being said. If there's somebody out there that can feel that thing, that want to cry with me, you just break right on down and cry with me. See, I'm not concerned about that because every one of these tears I cry, whether it's joy or whether it's pain, God catches every last one of them. So, if anybody, if everybody out there can comprehend what I'm saying, put a seven up there. Anybody that don't comprehend what I what I've been saying, then you make it known uh, so that we can make it clear. As soon as I find this book, I found it because it's a short book. Now, all praises, shouts out to you, Sister Juanita. See, my thing is, is that I don't deal with religion. I'm not a religious man. I'm a righteous. I'm striving to be a righteous man. Though I've been a part of all the religious constructs in my quest to find the most high. He never allowed me to have my growth stagnated or to become a boxed in to anything. We striving for righteousness and righteousness will never come out of religion. The only thing that comes out of religion is a traditionary methodology, a way of doing things. But ain't no righteousness coming out of there. Righteousness is only going to come out of the life that's living, not trying to live the life. You can't live the life of a dead man that have already lived and get righteousness out of there. You can only get righteousness out of your life as you put one foot in front of the other, not knowing what's to meet you, but staying in contact with the most high, his glorious son, and being in communication with the spirit. And as he revealed and unfold things, as we walk out our life, he shows us our mistakes, shows us where we need to move, shows us what's good, shows us what's not, and based on our choices that we make. Now, we start morphing into the righteous person that the most high mean for us to be. But you can't morph into righteousness when you're putting one foot in the footsteps of a man that's walking ahead of you, because he can't get rid of his own sin. He don't have no power Power to retain his spirit in his day of death. So we're going to have to learn. And don't worry about it if you got broke ankles, baby. It's a story in the Bible that tell you that. Silver and gold have our none. He make you to understand the things that's important. The materialistic things in this world ain't important, so don't worry about that. I didn't come to give you no materialistic things, but what I do have, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the gift of the Spirit in the name of the Messiah, in the name of the Most High. Rise up and walk. And immediately, your ankle bones and your ability to understand the scripture on your own, your ability to have wisdom and walk by these, your ability to overcome on your own, your ankle bones will receive strength and you'll find out, hey, I can leap and I can jump and I can praise the most high. It used to be a time that somebody had to carry me. Somebody had to give me money. Somebody had to feed me. Somebody was always responsible for me and that didn't make me feel good about myself. But when my own ankle bones receive strength and I get to the point where I don't need no help paying my lights, my gas, my water. I don't need no help paying my car note, paying my insurance. I don't need no help taking care of my children. I don't need no help putting an ice box in my refrigerator. I don't receive the strength of my ankles. Now I can stand on my own two feet. And when I can stand on my own two feet, I can move all the way into the purpose of the most high. Now I can go out and start telling other brothers what was told to me. Silver and gold have I none. Get this thing right here. Rich are born on the inside and then work their way out. Get this thing right here. Rise up in the name of the Messiah and walk. And you can see your brothers start leaping and jumping and shouting and praising the Most High. And that thing catches on like fire. Oh, how beautiful it is when brothers can dwell together in the spirit of unity. It's like the precious ointment that was put on the head of Aaron slid down onto his beard and then onto his skirts. He said that spirit is like the precious ointment that was put on the head of Aaron. When that spirit get on you, it'll slide off of you and jump on your brother. It won't be diluted. It won't be polluted. It'll be just as powerful when it gets on them as it is on you. And that's how the Most High mean to get his will done in the earth. It ain't got nothing to do with what you say you believe, what church you go to, what cap you belong to, what corner you gonna stand on. It ain't got nothing to do with what you gonna pray five times a day. But it got everything to do 
do? What, how you going to live your life? What kind of choices you going to make when it comes to your wife? What kind of decisions you going to make when it comes to your children? How you going to treat your brother down there on the corner? What kind of choices you going to make when it comes to the poor man that's cast down? What kind of choices that you going to make? Can you become a defender and a protector of those people that been downtrodden? The people that been forgotten about? The people that nobody cares about? That's what righteousness is. That's what righteousness is. Now, we're going to get to the second part of what I was telling you. There's much that can be said. I didn't mean for the video to last this long, but it did. So there's much that can be said. I won't say no more on that. I'll simply say this. The one that calls himself a Muslim. He is a Muslim. He classifies, he identifies with the religion of Islam. The one that called themselves a Christian, they uh, identify themselves with the religion of Christianity. The one that calls himself an Israelite, I can say this too, he can identify himself with the religion of of Israelite heritage, even though I know that to be an Israelite is not dealing with religion, but rather dealing with a bloodline. But see, this is the point where the accursed thing comes in at. When you understand that Israel, Israel is my bloodline, you don't make a religion out of that. You don't go back in the Bible. Do you think the people in the Bible was walking around and everybody they came to, I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. Your righteousness won't be in what you say. It'll be in what you do. But here's the truth of the matter. Those brothers and sisters that are Negro, that classify themselves as Muslim, they are the descendants of the same slaves that were in the cotton fields. Those brothers and sisters that classify themselves as Christians, they are descendants of those that were in the cotton fields. Brothers and sisters that classify themselves as Israelites, they were also descendants of those that were in the cotton fields. Those people that were in the cotton fields didn't live in the cotton fields. They were brought into the cotton fields as they got on boats. Where did the boats come from? The boats came from the banks of West Africa is where they were sold from. Well, if they were sold from West Africa, the banks of West Africa, Africa, that mean that the banks of West Africa was not the land that they dwelled in. Where were they coming from? Those people that were sold from the banks of West Africa ran from Jerusalem where they lived. As persecution came from the armies, the Roman armies. We are all one people. So you understand this, it don't make no difference how much knowledge that you have on a particular subject. When you look at the condition that we are in as one people, God said, all of Israel have sinned. Now we're going to Zephaniah, third chapter. Woe unto her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. Her princes within her are as roaring lions. Her judges are as evening wolves. They gnaw at the bones until the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The just Lord is in the midst thereof, and he will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the just knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I have made their streets waste. None that pass by their cities are destroyed. So that there is no man, that there is none inhabited. I said, surely thou will fear me. Surely thou will receive my instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off. However, I punished them. They rose up early and they corrupted their doings. Therefore, wait ye upon me. You see, no matter how the Most High have punished Israel, 
Every time we continue to corrupt our doings, what the Most High is saying, you better get over yourself, get over your books, get over what you think you know, and wait on me. He said, therefore, wait on me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up unto the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out on them my indignation, even all of my fierce anger. For all of the earth shall be devoured with fire of my jealousy. For then will I return unto the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. You will see the accursed thing. God is telling us that no matter how he done punished us, we continue to corrupt our ways. Our cities are desolate. Our streets are laid waste. And all of these things he said, because we keep on doing what we want to do and not what he wants us to do. So here he declares, therefore, all Israel, Israelite Muslim, Israelite Christian, Israelite that knows he's an Israelite, therefore, wait upon me. He said, and my determination is to destroy the nations who have afflicted you. He said, and when I destroy the nations that afflicted you and do all of these things, he said, then, come on, then, my Barakatha brothers, then, Ashima Hapshap Yahawashap, my brothers, then, what's up, Ak? Then, then I will restore unto you a pure language that all of the people, you see, when Israel only takes one person to be out of order, I don't care how much Hebrew words you think you know. You ain't doing nothing but trying to uh, uh, show to people that, that, that you know something more than they do. But that stuff ain't nothing. It don't move the heart of God. I don't care how much Hebrew words you can spit out. You ain't did nothing but made yourself look like a fool even when you declare that you're following the Paulinian epistles. He even told you. Any man speaking in tongues ain't nobody there to interpret it. He should shut up. He should shut his mouth because it's better to speak to a man in a language that he can understand than to be rattling off with some language that you just picked up. He said, then will I restore unto my people a pure language. That means you ain't going to have to teach me nothing. I ain't going to have to ask nobody about their dictionary, go to nobody's glossary to understand nothing. He said, then will I restore unto my people a pure language. I know you got Paleo Hebrew, you got Ancient Hebrew, you got all that stuff. But all that stuff ain't the language that God was talking about. Because when God restored a pure language, all of his people, from the least until the greatest, would be able to call on the name of the Lord with one consent, speaking by one name and and have one mind. All of us will be able to call on him with one consent. Now, here's the question that I want to ask to my brothers and sisters. Is that what you see? Is that what you see? How is all of God's people going to call on him with one consent? When one is saying, Allah Akbar. One is saying, Jesus is Lord and God reigns forever. Another one is saying, Yahshua. Yahawasha, Yahshea, Yahavahe, Yehovah, Yahweh. You see, Israel is more mixed up and confused than anybody. But we one people. How we all going to call on the name of the Lord with one consent? And here's the saddest thing about it. We all think that we got it right. The one that said Allah Akbar, he think he got it right. The one that said uh, uh, Ashima, Ashima, I don't know how to speak the language. Never had a desire to learn. Never thought, always thought it was rubbish. Anyway, but nevertheless, and all these different names that they call them and the name that the Christian called them, you know what? Do that line up with what the scriptures say about God's people? See, you can't be defined by what religion you call yourself. You got to be defined by the blood that's running through your veins. We're showing you this for a reason. 
So the brothers and sisters that genuinely seeking after the righteousness of the Messiah, they can have an understanding as to what they're going to look for in this world. That's how you know what to stay away from. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. It's the fruit that's being bared from these religious constructs. Is it lining up with the scripture? Are we calling on him with one consent? Is everybody calling on the same name? Let me read that again. Therefore, wait ye upon the Lord until the day that I rise up to the pray. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms. When we're going to take the kingdom? Now! When we're going to? Now! How we're going to take it? I'll show me I'll shop y'all. I'll shop. I'll be, when we're going to? And you ain't taking no kingdom? That's a bunch of rubbish. And it's pleasing to men's flesh. It's pleasing to men's flesh. It was pleasing to my flesh at one point too. Till the spirit slapped me across the head. Said, boy, you better get out of that mess. Don't you fall for that stuff. You better keep on walking. You better keep on walking. These same brothers right here that you're looking up to, they're going to be the same brothers that you got to go back and try to raise up. You can't be connecting yourself to people when you're carrying the weight of my word. You can't be getting close to people because you all have to deliver that word without favor. Without wavering, without picking and choosing, who you going to tell what? It don't make me no difference. I tell anybody the same thing. That's why I don't have no friends. That's why I don't have no running dogs. That's why I don't have no partners. That's why I ain't clicked up with no organization because I'm clicked up with God and I know what God means. God means for me to be able to speak his word to anybody, whether it's my mama, whether it's my daddy, whether it's my wife, my children, whether it's my siblings, whether it's a friend at the street, whether it's the person that I work with, whether it's the people that it don't make no difference. So we don't do that. We don't deal with the word. The word says, Wait on me, my determination is to gather the nations together that he may pour out his indignation on them and his fierce anger on the earth for the things that have been done to the people that occupied the cotton fields. He said that at that time, see, there's a time for everything, just the same way that God created times for those, Elder Amaniel, if you still on here, Elder Amaniel, that's one of my elders that I look to that, that shares wisdom and, and guides me, you know what I'm saying, along with the Spirit as well. That's somebody the most high placed in my life. And he, is he responsible for my understanding? No, he isn't. Have I learned everything that I know from him? No, I haven't. But he had become a great guy in my life as a father figure or an older man that walked out in front of me by experience. And when I start pondering these things right here, and this scripture was shaking my very foundation, it was El Demoniel who had been in the land of Israel for over 40 years that came back to make me understand. Don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of their faces, Elder. You right on target. And he began to break down the 364 days a year that govern all of the seasons and everything. And he said 28 days, Elder, 13 weeks is 13 weeks apart from each other feast days. He said that means that each month going to be composed of 28 days. And when we got 28 days and those 13 weeks of separation, now you got a 364 day a year calendar. And it made me feel so good because God sometimes have you to open up stuff that make people mad at you. Make them walk off and leave you. Make them infuriated at you. Make them go and make all kind of exposed Dimitri Milligan exposed videos. Sometimes God can open up things that you don't even want to deal with because you know how your brother's going to act. That's without understanding. And so you have to have people that's out ahead of you. And I thank the Most High for everything that he have done. And, and Elder Maniel was right there with me to show me that. He brought a greater understanding, even though the word was simplistic. And it was simplistic. I didn't understand some of the things, like he said, from 13 weeks, uh, from one 
to the one to the one to the next and 13 to the next and so so it's 13 weeks in between each one of these things it's going to be 52 weeks that you're dealing with and so i didn't fully understand the 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 the, the calendar period but when he broke it down not only did I have a better understanding of it, I felt good about it. I didn't no longer have to be in fear of my brothers because I knew it was somebody out there that was far older than us, that was in the place that these things were instituted, that was showing me that I was right on target. So I became fearless at that. But this right here, he said, we wait on him. Don't keep on trying to heap up what you want to do, what you think. You know, the question was asked by one of my brothers. I had a beautiful conversation last night. He said, so does that mean that you don't even attempt to keep them or that you don't that you don't try to keep them? You know, are you saying that? I said, first of all, I'm not saying anything. I'm reading the scripture. But then again, I said, but that's exactly what I'm saying. I said, because why would you waste your time and your energy trying to do something that is impossible for you to do? Because the environment that you live in has not been made conducive for you to do it. See, people get the right to do whatever they want to do. Because God gave you a choice. But just because you do it don't mean God accepted it. And so when Romans say, I bear them record that they have a zeal, but their zeal is not according to God's knowledge. And he says, so every man have gone about to establish his own. So you know what that means? That means when you don't understand how God means for a thing to do, and you just say, well, God know my heart. God know my, God ain't concerned about that. That's what you choosing to do. When God had made his knowledge and his wisdom on a particular thing available, and you, oh, God know my heart, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. God ain't accepting that. He ain't accepting that. So don't fool yourself. So we say, well, ain't no need in wasting your time in areas that you can't do. See, it's something different. Because Elder Emmanuel... He sends word. Well, you know, Yom Kippur is coming up. You know, this is coming up. You know, the Passover is coming up. And he always on me. They ain't paying attention. You know, it's the Passover. The brothers are supposed to be coming up here to the mountaintop. That's according to the scripture. But how many brothers do you see breaking off, coming up to the mountaintop? You see? How many do you see? You see? And it would do them good. To go over there or go into the mountaintop. You know why? Because they're over there in the land. The environment has been made conducive. To be able to keep the things in the way that the Most High meant for them to be kept. We're in, over there in the land. Our Ebo brothers. All of our Israelite brothers. Those that's left shall be left from Patros and from Elam. And from the islands and the coast. They have never lost contact with the ordinances. That were written on heavenly tablets and still sealed in stone. They have never lost contact with the high holy days that will go 13 weeks after the next one. 13 weeks. They have never lost contact with those things. Our, uh, uh, elders Cletus and them, they have never lost contact with those things because they reside in the land. But those that have forgotten, after your death, Moses, after your death, your children, they're going to forget. And we forgot. And we have a genuine spirit to try and offer God these things or try to do these things. But we don't understand because it seems like we don't have the ability to be able to draw lines of distinction between when we were in our own land and able to govern ourselves by our own cultures and our own calendar versus when we came into captivity and lost our history, our heritage, our identity, our everything. And as we slowly getting it back, we try to gravitate toward these things without having a full understanding that it's, it's more that goes into it. You have to be set in the whole particular environment in order for these things to do. And it don't make no difference how good you feel about it. Well, I want to offer it to God. and I know our ancestors. Yeah, but when your ancestor did it, they will have everything in the right place to be able to do it. And you don't. So the Messiah was risen up to be an umbrella of grace 
Father, I know they don't know. They forgot. They forgot the days. They don't know when the days are, Father. They don't know when they are. Father, have mercy on them. I'm covering them with my grace because of what they've been through and what they don't know. Have mercy on them. You see? Those that know, woe to him that know to do and do it not. Our brothers that's in the land that know to do, they don't have to be up under that particular level of grace. But they're also covered with other levels of grace because of the occupancy of their enemies that prohibit them from being able to keep things that God have instructed them to do as well. So all of us are covered by the grace of Hamashiach concerning the things that were set before us that we are no not able to do. So when the Most High do these things, he said, wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him, our brothers over there in the land. Wait on him. Because he will destroy. He will destroy those enemies. He will destroy those French. He will destroy those Chinese. He will destroy those Europeans. And he will build up everything like it's supposed to be. Wait on him. Our brothers in the states, in North, Central, and South America, his thing is to wait on him. Our camp brothers, wait on the Lord. Our community leaders, wait on the Lord. Our church leaders, wait on the Lord. Our Islamic brothers, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord until he do these things that he said he would do. And when he do them, he will supernaturally sprinkle a new language on us. It won't be no Barakata. Won't be no Allah Akbar. Won't be no blessed, I'm highly favored, won't be no God, won't be no Jesus, won't be no Yahweh, won't be no Yahweh, it won't be no Yahweh, won't be no Yeshua, won't be no Yahshua, it won't be no Muhammad, it won't be nothing, all of us shall call on the name of the Lord with one consent and one name, he shall be our God and we shall be his people. But if we keep going down the road that we keep going down, then guess what's appointed for you? When you find the accursed thing, take him and all that he have down to the nearest park. Throw rocks at them until they move no more and then set them on fire. Fire and judgment will be our portion. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it.